Hello friends and welcome to a new video and welcome to 2025. So I thought I'd start this year off, uh, well I had a different plan, um, a very theoretical video. However, we're going to do a practical one. So this is one of my uh, my second dual channel amplifier. Now you say dual channel Edward, um, is that um, stereo? Uh, well it's not, it is actually a dual channel mono amplifier. So I'm remaining in mono, I'm not going to go to stereo. And the reason, by the way, if you haven't followed me for, the, for quite long, is basically if your main interest is why a person is on stage or what he's doing there, what is so special about it, where he is on stage is actually not important. So I'm sticking with mono because I'm only interested in why an artist, why a musician, why a band, why an orchestra is there in the first place. Why? And I want to, in my amplifier designs, I'm looking for the impact to feel why that person is on stage and to have my chain lift the performance back out in a way. So this is not about accuracy. This is not about having a microphone that registers exactly what it was on from the store because we are listening with our brains and with our ears and what a microphone picks up, which is also highly directional, is not what we're hearing. So for that, I use a more sort of creative, more impact driven approach. And yes, often uh, low distortion and so on sounds better, even in my amps, but it's not the goal. The goal is pure musicality. It is translating musical intent to be. Now, one of the best amps that I ever had uh, um, that accomplished that best was actually the, the Type 26 drives, 46 drives, 50. You might find some sound clips on that, on that. And this amp was inspired by that. However, I recognized by looking at it that, for example, the last stage in that amp, the, the Type 50, wasn't actually needed so much because the compression driver is so much more efficient than the woofer. And then I realized a second thing. The compression driver is, sounds, has a different character than the woofer, which is from paper. And now hopefully I will be moving to a paper compression driver as well. But what I'm saying is these two drivers are already quite different. So how about we take, we create two channels, one for the low, one for the high, and so that I can tune the sound character to be given the differences in the two drivers better to suit the two drivers. So this is not, not about losing coherency, which is a big major pitfall that you could do with going multi-channel because it becomes much harder to make it a, a, in, into a consistent performer that is coherent across the spectrum. But I hope to be able to tweak the tubes and, and, and tweak the design of this amp so that it will actually bring more harmony rather than less. And um, yes, there's some technical advantages as well, but um, um, yeah, we'll see. And uh, one of the technical advantages is uh, because um, it's just two stages. So the high has two stages and the, oh sorry, this is the high combination, these two tubes, and here these two tubes are doing the lows. And, and you have to sort of, my um, planning for the crossover is 650 hertz, um, maybe 800 hertz, sort of in that region. We'll see where it ends up. Now. Is this going to be an active amp? No, it's not. What I'm trying to do is um, I will have some filtering also by uh, playing with the bypass caps to do some filtering in the in the lows, especially on the high channel. So I will weed out the, 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 the lows already there because I'm already using a bypass a, a cathode self bias here. So I can actually play with it and, and create a cutoff without actually introducing capacitors in the signal part unnecessarily early because I want to delay that as much as possible. So I'm still going to work with a passive crossover. And the reason is just, I just don't want, I hate capacitors in the signal part. I think they nearly always sound terrible. Um, hence we use um, transformer in-stage coupling, one amorphous, one iron. Um, we use a Hashimoto output transformer and another one, a bigger one for the lows, uh, which is a, um, I think a three or three and a half kilo beast. Um, a very high current uh, output transformer. So I hope that all those optimizations still deliver a coherent sound, but we'll have to see. And this is the reason why I'm making this video because, well, 
it is a journey. I don't know how it, even though this amp is almost ready, uh, I just don't know how it's um, gonna pack out. And uh, I think in this sort of a three, maybe four part series, um, we're just gonna go on, on, on exploring it, see what happens, uh, whether this is a good idea or not. And hopefully that gives you either some inspiration or some ideas, or uh, it might just be of interest to you. So that's why we're doing this video. Um, now, is this unprecedented? Absolutely not. It is rare, um, but it's not unprecedented. If here we got the website of Sakuma San, or at least uh, the people that maintain his works, and if you look here, you see two channels amplifier. So he's got he made about what is this 15, 20 amplifiers, and he list here what tubes he used for the highs and what tubes for the lows, um, and the rectifiers. And when it was published and where it was published, his designs. So nothing new. Also in modern times, by the way, Road Me The Cat has a six channel uh, amplifier, uh, which uh, I think it's called the Melquiades, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, very, I think a very different concept. I'm trying to stick like uh, Sakuma here with a mono amplifier that is two channels. I also using some of the tubes that he is using, like the, the, the Type 50. Um, and the 12A that he uses regularly, although not in um, things. So that's what I'm using. Let's look at it. So this was my inspiration, um, and this my, I'll, I'll share my plan. So this was my one of my best amps, and as you can see, it was a 26 driving a 46 driving a 50, and um, the 26 used filament bias, and the other ones used fixed bias. Now I'm, I don't like fixed bias because if the bias drops away, you blow up your tubes, and um, the inherently you know, that, that is just a recipe for disaster and I already lost a 46, I didn't lose a 50 luckily. Um, but that was the inspiration and of course you can also replace this easily with a 12A, which has similar amplification, it's just a bit more powerful um, and a less, less, just a little bit less um, warm I would say than the 26. Um, but I thought sort of my concept was to work with this one and directly go to the highs while the lows can actually maybe use an indirectly heated tube with a higher amplification factor than uh, DHTs. So this was all DHT and it was very nice but it required, because the gain wasn't too much, um, it, it required quite a strong input signal. So what is the plan now? So rather than having 26, 46, I am actually going with 12A drives 801A because if you look in the highs and you compare it to the 46, I would say that the 801A is a superior performer. And um, that's not as low output impedance compared to the 46, but I want to try this. Um, I can also do a step up here and then do 26, 46, but I'm starting to try with 12A drives 801A via the Hashimoto to the high, high speakers. And then in the lows, we're using one of my, the second best, solution that I found for a two channel or for a two stage amp in um, holistic was the 6S45P and it drives the type 50. Um, the better one was the, actually the EL33 with a step up, a, a times two step up, but it's a little bit less insensitive because um, this one has a, a amplification of 52 while the EL33 is um, 20. So even if it goes times two with a step up, it still ended up a bit insensitive, the whole amp. And this one is a better combination. So it was one of my favorites. However, when I listened to this, it was highly dynamic. It was very good, but it sounded just crude and a bit, if you will, too literal or so, but it was just a bit crude in the highs. But now having it dedicated to the lows, I'm expecting that that crudeness, which was more in the treble regions and the mid regions, um, dissipates a little bit because it's only doing up until 650 hertz and you know one of the things I noticed by disconnecting for example your tweeter is how muddied actually the low range is how how little sparkle and life is actually in that region so I'm, I'm suspecting that this tube not being a DHT but um, doing really well actually in, in, in this low region uh, maybe it's not audible that and while here I can f keep the whole chain in an all DHT so that's the plan. Um, these two are going to use filament bias, even this, um, if you don't know how to do that um, with an indirect, you can actually. So I'm doing this so that I can prevent any capacitors. They're not in the signal path just here, only here when I go to self bias or 
cathode bias, if you will, these two will have that, but it is later in the amp, so its impact will be much less um, being here, being present here, uh, than um, in the, so by avoiding it in the first stage. So that's the plan. Um, here is the amp. Uh, we'll have one more look. So um, as said, just in a little overview, this is the whole power supply section. Um, this is the first uh, big um, choke. These are for the two uh, very high uh, 40 Henry uh, chokes, which are used for the input tubes. So to fully isolate them, these are for the input tubes. Uh, that's the bypass, and th these are for the output tubes. So they're all DC link capacitors. Then we got here two DC modules. This powers the Type 50 um, with DC. Uh, the 801A will be actually on AC for the moment. Um, see how that goes. And this is um, this produces DC. Uh, about 12 volts uh, or 11 volts and here we got two Rod Coleman um, regulators uh, DHT regulators which actually use the filament by uh, produce the filament bias for these two chips so we got the 12A here and the 6X45P here uh, and there we got a shunt um, a shunt volume of, um, control so it only is uh, two resistors in the signal part at any one time Interstage Landau and a Chinese amorphous core, and that drives these two output tubes. So that's the basic amp layout. That's the plan. Um, oh yeah, and two different power supplies. So the high high voltage is um, different from the filament supply. They're completely separated, so that any variations in power draw, even on the short term, are not influencing anyway the the, the filament supply. And um, we've here got a switch with some um, for the startup se sequence where there is a bit of resistance in the way. So um, we get a very slow start with low voltages first. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, that's the plan. If you have any questions, anything was unclear, post it in the comments. Um, I'm not a comment whore or something that you have to do that. But, um, you know, that's the way to um, actually, uh, if I left anything out or... Uh, you have any questions about this design otherwise i'll probably see you in part two thank you for watch watching i hope this was uh, of uh, some inspiration or um, interest and um, i'll hope to catch you in part two or another video have a brilliant week have a brilliant day and i'll hope to catch you soon bye bye